Welcome to another episode of the Well Life Podcast, where we connect with experts around what we have determined to be the eight dimensions of wellness. Yeah, today we have on Coach Rachel. She's a certified nutritionist and founder of Fuel and Form Nutrition. So, Hi. glad to have you on. Rachel, thank you. Thank you for taking the trip. Thank you for being here, taking some time. Obviously, we know you're, you're busy, um, full-time job and running a business as well. Can you tell us a little bit about kind of who you are, what's Fuel and Form, Sure. How you got here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we'll have to take it back, I guess. I'll talk about, like, I guess how I got into uh, nutrition and fitness first, and that'll make it easier to talk about why it's called Fuel and Form and mm -hmm. everything. So I would say, um, so I'm 34, so 10, 12 years ago is when I started my journey, I would say. I was in a my first real relationship, working in the city, first apartment, and I met this guy and, um, you know, got started dating, and in this relationship, he literally told me every single day or every other day that my body is gross. Like, you are, your body's ugly, what? comparing me to other girls on Instagram. This was, like, right when Instagram came around, and it changed the way I felt, like, my insecurity-wise. And along that, and it was like, not only, it was like verbally abusive, physically abusive, and I lost myself for a very long time within that year. We were together almost three years. And you know, exercise started coming around, we worked together, so people would go on their lunch break to like work out at the gym, and it was something that I was allowed to do, and it didn't trigger him for any repercussions to come. So I ended up going on my lunch break to the gym, and I like just felt strong like I started to feel like myself like I this piece was coming back to me yeah. so we ended up like um, I think I bought a program through an influencer because I would work out on like the second floor every guy was on the top floor our cardio floor was in the middle so I started working with weights and I felt like confident and strong in that area we ended up breaking up thank God but um, I then hired a personal trainer and from there, like, he helped me to get my first pull-up. He really, like, transformed my passion into exercise and where I got to feel like myself again. And then I asked him about food because I was having, like, a lot of stomach issues. I was, like, a little bit, like, overweight from what I was used to. And uh, he's like, I eat chicken and rice all day. I don't, I don't really know what to tell <laughs> you. Like, go, go, like, Google something. I said, okay. So from the same program I bought from an influencer, she had a meal plan. And so I followed it to a T because I'm like a meticulous person. You give me something to do, I'm going to do it. So I, it was chicken, rice, and asparagus um, every single day. I ended up losing the weight. Carrots had too much sugar. Fruits were bad, like wow. things like that. So I was in the dieting world. I was a fad dieter at that time. So <clears throat> I then talked to him again and I was like, or I message the influencer I was like is there anything else that I can do to transition to like you know eating real meals and going out with my friends and they're like no it's either this lifestyle or you pick that lifestyle and I was yeah. like that seems like odd to me like there has to be some middle ground for there to be so um fast forward I ended up working or out at this now uh powerlifting like gym in the city and um, it was all about like women empowerment, like women can lift as much as men. Like I always remember going to like the smaller bar um, for like squats and then just the trainer one day was like, you're going to go here. And it was 135 and I've never done that before ever. And I just started like going and she's like, see, you can do it. Like you're mentally told yourself you can't because of things that people say. So I had my exercise regimen down, you know, I got into powerlifting and all that stuff, but then like the nutrition was this huge gray area and I was like, there has to be something better. So for myself, it was a lot of experiments, looking up information on my own, like, and um, like checking, like I found the difference between like, uh, I guess like a fad article, like Healthline versus like a peer reviewed and systemic reviewed mm -hmm. articles so I started reading those and then um, I started experimenting like changing recipes that I love every day into making them like less calories and higher protein so it kind of was a trial and error for myself that I ended up transitioning into nutrition and I sort of started to love it because I went down the path 
of people telling me like all the wrong information and saying like this, there has to be something better. Like yeah. you can't live your life like this. There's like, there's always a little bit more something missing. Yeah, so there like... was something missing. Like it was always like an all or nothing. And like, I was like, yeah, I can't live my life in all or nothing. And then I cut down for my powerlifting competition. I wanted to be in a 98 pound weight class. And at the time I didn't really know about cutting that well. So I like put in my fitness pal to lose two pounds a week and I lost muscle and I got down to the weight class, but I couldn't lift any of the weights that mm -hmm. were my starting weights for yeah. the powerlifting. So then I was like, all right, then I had like, I remember I have a photo of me that night cause you get to now refuel after you make the weight. And I'm on the floor hunched over with stomach pain because I just ate whatever I wanted at that point. Mm -hmm. I think we went out for like burgers and I had extreme stomach pain. The next day I couldn't lift. And then after that, in a month, I gained all my weight back that I lost, which wasn't a lot, maybe 10 pounds, but I looked different. I felt different. Like, so I lost all my muscle, now just gained fat. Now we're calling it a bulk, This the <laughs> coach that I'm working with. And she's like, all right, since you're bulking, we're gonna let's transition you to power lift, um, bodybuilding. I was like, okay, sure. Like another thing to compete in, great. So then she gave me my meal plan and I cal started, I calculated calories and now I learned my lesson from the first time and I'm like, and I texted her, I'm like, this is a 700 calorie meal plan. Wow. And I was, and she's like, yeah, it's to boost your metabolism. And I was like, I know better and I'm not going to follow what someone else is saying anymore to me. So I quit the gym and ended up leaving and transitioning and doing my own thing, doing meal plans for people with realistic food. I ended up cutting <clears throat> for the, I ended up still pursuing that bodybuilding competition that I wanted to do. And I ended up winning first place in it and I cut down and all that stuff and I was never below 1300 calories. Yeah, that's never. great. You know, and it yeah. was, it's still a very restrictive, um, like a competition base mm -hmm. and revenue to go down, but I didn't feel as I, deprived as I did or triggered with food as I did before. And then I learned my lesson to like reverse diet. So like as long as it takes you to diet is the patient as patient as you need to be to reverse it back the other day, other way. So you don't have other issues that are going to occur and happen. So that's like how I transitioned. Well, I learned fitness from, I loved fitness and then I love being strong in fitness because yeah. also I'm a petite person. So, um, Anytime everyone's like, oh, she can't do it. I'm like, watch me, I'll do it. <laughs> so my last uh, powerlifting competition was last year, and I was able to deadlift 278, and I weighed in at 103. Wow. Let's which is go. Great. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, first off, love your story, right? Um, just the fact that you were able to take so many negatives that were happening and then just transform them into positives. I think so many people, those negatives just compound. They never find that positive outlet, so... Kudos to you. I'm happy that you're on the end of that, on the okay. other side of that, right? And we, yeah. we got to see you shine and, and right, we're on the brighter side of, of that situation. And you were able to kind of turn that for yourself. Um, and then on the other end, your fitness and nutrition experience all comes from personal experience, mm -hmm. right? Like I love that you're that, and I think we're gonna talk about that too later on, just like the, the scientific kind of um, uh, studies that you reach and, and, and research for your, for your clients and, and, and to base your kind of nutrition approach off of. But the fact that you went through it all, right, and your body went through it all is, I think, is, is way more experience than, than kind of even the reading that we can do. Yeah. Right? So you were yeah. able to kind of find a place where your body felt good, able to refuel your body, able to get your, your, your body to a place where you weren't, you went through a fad diet and saw, like, hey, this isn't the appropriate approach for how people should be losing weight. Now I can actually talk about those things. So we have to experience things before we can actually teach people about that, right? right? right. You're a better coach for it. Yeah, right. and like I've never, like everyone's like, you don't have, you never had issues of losing like 30 pounds or 20 pounds. And I'm like, no, I was never had that sort of issues, but I had issues where I had bad relationships with food. Mm -hmm. I had extreme uh, stomach issues and other things happening that I dieted just like you did. And I learned that it didn't work and there is a better way. It is an easier way, but it isn't the best way to do it, and you're never going to maintain it that way. And that was the one thing that I wanted to lear learn from this was, or teach other people, is that like, it, you can lose weight in a way that is healthy mm -hmm. and sustainable. Like, mm -hmm. you don't have to go through this chronic cycle of, 
up and down because you also mentally don't feel good at that point either. Not only physically do you not feel good, you mentally aren't well. So it was just like this place that I ended up finding, uh, founding Fuel Informed Nutrition. So it's like fuel your body, transform your mind. Because once you have properly structured your eating habits, you're going to change your mind. You're going to start to understand what your body signals are telling you that, you know, when you're hungry, you should eat, not ignore it. Like also I cater more towards women who fad diet much more, I Mm -hmm. think. And they already save up their calories before going out to dinner. They're going to skip breakfast. They're going to have coffee. They're going to do all the diet pills, invest all this money into things. And it's like, and it's going to always work temporarily, but aren't you tired of that? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. don't you want that long-term success where you mentally feel good, you have the energy again, your clothes start fitting better, you have no inflammation or stomach issues, and you know how to, like, you're not, like, anxiety or triggered from food. You can make ch- choices and not feel left out. You can eat a donut. You could have a slice of cake, a glass of wine, and still have the results. You're not going to have a six-pack, like... Is that your goal? Sure. Then you're not going to have to, you can't eat a donut. You can't have cake. You can't have this moder, like this um, moderation in your diet. But if you want to hit an extreme goal like that temporarily, sure, I can get you there, but I'm going to help transition you out of it too. I'm never going to just leave you low like that. Keep your lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah, And and make you believe that that's where you're supposed to be 24 seven because it's very hard to live and sustain consistently at a level like that. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And it's coming from, especially I feel like right with females in that world, like you said, they get crazed in these diet fads or we deal with it a lot with the juice cleanses or this or that, right? And it's coming from your perspective of going through that, that huge kind of like pit that you had of figuring all this out, right? Going through it with yourself, within yourself. And then you also competed in a, in like a, right, a bodybuilding or physique show or, or bikini or whatever you did, right? It's, that's extremely sometimes like mentally detrimental to yeah. people and you're still on the health side of like this is this is just a period mm-hmm. of a few months out of my life right yeah. that's a goal that's yeah. something that's not your lifestyle it's not going to affect you mentally beyond just the competition you're just changing your body as a machine to perform and then you're going right back to your lifestyle and like figuring that out. i think that's so huge is that like well-rounded balance of like if you want to hit this for a little while i can get you there but yeah. how do you go back to living your life in a balanced way? Yeah. You know? and, and build these lifestyle habits that can kind of stay yeah. with you. Yeah, and that's the things that's <clears throat> missing with diets is they don't transition people to address the triggers. Like mm-hmm. a big thing is if you work in a workplace, there's always donut sugars, uh, donuts, treats, uh, food. If someone's ordering food. It's like, all right, you can say no because you have that end goal of this competition, <laughs> sure, but then when you're done with it and you don't have that end goal, what are you going to do? You're just going to go right back to it. So mm-hmm. addressing the underlying issues that surround, like the last thing I always address with clients is weight loss. Like, yes, I know you want to lose 20 pounds, but mm-hmm. we're going to address what your habits are first, and then we're, I'm going to teach you what a calorie deficit is in the right way, and then we're going to transition you to lose the weight. Usually along the process in the first two weeks, I always have a client drop weight just from changing their habits and their routine without thinking about the scale and calories and all that. And like the biggest thing um, with like the inact with calories and tracking is I had a client who um, she was on a plateau, like a plateau is never a real thing anyway, you know, so uh, she was on this plateau for a year. And she um, came to me and she's like, I don't know what I'm doing. I use my fitness pal. I'm so good at it. I know about calories. I know about this macros and blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay, what do you eat? We went through her Mm -hmm. eating patterns. And when she mentioned her breakfast, she's like, I eat the same breakfast every day all the time. It's my favorite thing. It's yogurt with granola and blueberries. I said, okay, how many calories is your yogurt then? And she couldn't tell me. And you're using this app to plug yeah. in every single day and you aren't looking at the calories of the yogurt. And I was like, no. So anytime I like work with somebody who's ever a professional or great at my fitness health, you're getting rid of that app. Mm-hmm. You're going to learn mm-hmm. to read the label and be present in what you're doing because that's another thing. You're just going through the motions. You're not being present. You're mm-hmm. just like, all right, this is the lowest. I'm going to click this, click this. Looks right. And then move yeah. on. So yeah. I always have clients like journal their food first to start to uh, see what they their patterns are and things like that and really start to open up their eyes and start to learn. I'm like, what are your triggers? What are your patterns? What do you notice? Mm-hmm. And then they'll read back their journal for the week and they're like, 
oh, I notice I do this on Fridays, yeah. and I notice on Sundays I do this. And it's like, all right, so you're becoming aware. I don't need to tell you this because you're learning about yourself and your body, so how can we make it better? Like, what are we gonna, what are the things that you wanna work on for yourself? Yeah. Instead of me just telling somebody what to do and what to eat, because anybody can do that, you know? So I'm having them open up their eyes to get them to know themselves better mm -hmm. and how to handle themselves. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest key. It's about awareness. Yeah. Um, so for you, so that you gave us a little insight into kind of how you how you do some nutrition coaching. But so what is your um, I guess your nutrition coaching style, right? Like how, I know you, you talk on your on your Instagram page, which there's a lot of information on. If, if anyone hasn't seen um, Rachel's page, we'll point you to that at the end. But um, right about protein consumption, accountability, carbs, kind of how do you first start, and like what what are the things you're talking to your clients about first? So the first thing I usually start with is having regular eating patterns, like. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You have to have the three baseline mm -hmm. meals a day. Like, no skipping. Um, and then the next thing is protein. Protein is so important. It's the least consumed macronutrient, especially for women. They mm -hmm. have no idea what protein means. <laughs> and so it's like the goal, like I consume 160 grams of protein a day. So I don't tell somebody to have one pound, like one gram per body weight for them. So I'm like, you need to hit 100. Like, your goal is 100 grams. If you can start there, we can start to work your way up. But for them, that's very hard mm -hmm. because their breakfast is usually zero, yeah. you know? So I'm like, all right, collagen and coffee, easy. You yeah. drink coffee every day, you mm -hmm. get 15 grams right Even there. Even just like, the, I was going to say the yogurt, the type of yogurt, right? Yeah. Right, the type of yogurt. Like reading the label, but it's like, it's a Yo Play <laughs> strawberry yogurt that has 22 grams of sugar. It's like... Mm -hmm. shift that one thing too and it's like that awareness isn't even there either right, you right. know there's or, like 18 different types of yeah or like yeah. the vegan yogurt the almond milk because it's le it's made of it's almonds healthier, and less yeah. inflammatory and healthy i'm like what part of that is healthy like yeah. greek yogurt is fine just yeah. plain greek yogurt go for it so it's like you know uh and you can never you always got to replace it instead of like removing something yeah. because then i learned they replace it with something else so I always start with that, uh, with protein, 100 grams. I give them a usual format to try and follow, and it's like hit either 30, 30, and 30 with a, a snack, have a protein shake for breakfast if you're normally not doing that, and do like 20 a few times a day. But for everybody, it's different, and it's a process. Like I don't want to be able to, and I'll give them lists and snacks, but I don't want to tell you what to eat because you're going to get sick of it. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I can tell you I eat jerky and string cheese every day, and you can do it for two weeks. But after the two weeks, you're like, this isn't appetizing anymore. So what are ways, what do you crave? What are you building? So I try, I do that with protein. For carbs, um, like, I mean, I personally love carbs, with, love carbs way more than fat. And people don't have issues consuming fat in their diet. They always over consume fat. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like... And I end up telling them, well, it's four calories per gram for protein, four yeah. calories, per, and then nine for um, fat. So what do you want to do here? You always want to, like, remove that extra avocado that you're having. Avocado toast everything. Avocado with your salad. <laughs> avocado with this. Olive oil on everything. Like, you got to start to remove that, and now you can have more carbs, have more energy. Yeah. Um, a lot of clients and women that I work with, they'll not eat carbs all day and their last meal will be carbs. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, you're not losing weight also because your body doesn't have enough energy that it's getting during the day. So you have to change that distribution. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just had someone recently, she's like, I'm having sweet potato for lunch. And I'm like, great. And what did happen this week? You dropped two pounds. Mm -hmm. Like that's what ends up happening. So when you add other things, uh, like f filling things like carbs and yeah. the complexity of it, then you'll snacking later in the day will go. Cause like I also had a client who eats sandwiches for lunch every day. She's gonna kill me if she sees this. She knows I'm talking about her. But um, I'm like, stop making sandwiches because you have 14 <laughs> snacks after you eat the sandwich. Mm -hmm. So make something heartier. So we tried chickpea pasta and I checked her food and there was no snacks after lunch now. So it's like, you have to learn, yeah. like you can't gotta escape that uh, fear from it. So baseline is, um, three meals a day at least minimum a protein shake a day I tell people whether or not you want to just have a core life or make one with fruit is fine or just chug it with water get through it and then protein 100 grams uh, minimum to start and then don't be afraid of carbs carbs are you need them they're your yeah. energy source they are 
what makes you feel good, I feel like, mm-hmm. it, it is your energy. So, so when people tell me I have no energy, it's because you're lacking that. Yeah. You know, and it's your brain. Your brain needs yeah. it. Yeah, we have so many people that uh, come, in, come in here to do strength training, but they're on zero carbs, right, because they're trying to lose weight. And we have to kind of try to reform their thought on that, that you're not going to be able to try to, you're not going to be able to build the shape and the yeah. body that you're looking for with no carbs. Right. You're not going to have the energy, yep. and you're not going to be able to, Get stronger, right. right? If you're in the gym, if you're not utilizing that energy source, it's right. also the picture yeah. these people have them have of themselves where they're they're six percent body fat and they're like, I just need to lose an extra five pounds. I just got back from vacation. It's like you don't have anything to to go down yeah, to. Yeah. You yeah. don't have anything to lose. All you're doing is putting yourself smaller and smaller and smaller, and you don't have energy to this, and you don't feel good. So you think that right? It's like that mental self-deprecation on that lose five pounds. They keep putting themselves smaller, which gives their brain less energy, and they feel even worse, but they still are caught up on yeah. self-deprecating. So it's like, how do you, right? It's like, eat, it's a eat cycle. more yeah. food. And yeah. you never know if you have carbs and now lift heavier, yeah. your body's going to change in places, and you're going to look better mm-hmm. than you probably do yeah. now, yeah. you know? That's as a like, whole other side yeah, of like, as you my give arms like are too a, big. <laughs> <laughs> as, you, as you give like an antidote about a client, we had someone in here that came in like mostly eating keto um, her entire life. Right. Yeah. And, but she was she, she didn't have the energy couldn't couldn't move the weights a little yeah. bit so the same thing we introduced a little bit of sweet potato for lunch right and it's like mind blown like holy shit these are carbs and yeah. they help you yeah. right but it wasn't like now go out and eat potato chips pretzels and, and eat bags of candy no it was like just add some sweet potato at lunch and like your, your, your workout following that's going to be great. And, and she saw it, right? And to your point, body composition was better and she lost weight she was looking right. for. Right, exactly. Yeah. You need it. Mm-hmm. Like, you're going to just be holding and storing fat because it doesn't, like, I hate, I hate keto. Like, you know, it's <laughs> not the, it's not good for you. Like, it's definitely not a route mm-hmm. to go in. And you want to look good? You're eating fat all day? You're going to look soft. Mm-hmm. You know, that's also another thing. Do you want to look hard and be lean or do you want to have that soft look? Like, so, mm-hmm. yeah. Why is that, though? Keto. You could tell tell the, right, well, the people why you're, you're going to look softer. Because you're consuming fat. Mm-hmm. fat. You're consuming fat, so it's going to add to your body fat. Mm-hmm. Like, and you are not having the carbs or the protein to build your muscle mm-hmm. underneath. So you're, fill, not, yeah. you're not gaining anything from mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So... I've, I've, no one knows to talk to me about keto anymore. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've, we've had a, yeah. we have a lot of keto conversations because yeah. it's trendy and, and whenever trendy. things are trendy, always... people, people tend to want to jump on and they see stories of people losing weight on keto. There's mm-hmm. entire keto Instagram accounts, yeah. right? And it's, uh, but the basis of it was used, supposedly, specifically used like for a specific disease to treat that, yeah. right? So It was for and seizures it, and kids. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So then it, it spread out because maybe we saw that population was losing weight and someone got wind of it, right? Yeah. But, um, uh, so I guess for you too, like, and I, what I've liked from your, from your content is that you do a lot of, you mentioned this kind of like science, scientific-based research. Uh, speak a little bit about how you kind of, I know you gave a little bit, but like how that came to be and, and kind of how you implement that kind of mm-hmm. in, your, in your style. So I think I like found these websites <clears throat> on accident. I don't, I have them all in my phone, like a list of things that I, resources that I kind of go to, but it's NCBI, I yep. think, dot org or com is the, one of the ones that I really use. And it's like, I tell my clients, I was like, don't believe me, believe this. Like mm-hmm. you can Google any, like how to lose weight and you'll have 25 different ways and articles tell yeah. you how Opinion, to do it. Opinionated, yeah. yeah, like bodybuilding.com, yeah, like different. They'll do like a, oh, based on a study of 18 people over 20 days, like this is the result. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. like, all right, that's not a real study, <laughs> you know, okay. Yeah. Not enough people and not <laughs> yeah. enough, not not enough long time. Enough. Yeah. So like my biggest thing is when I did the seminar, it was like, um, have you, things to boost your metabolism. And I was like, who has heard of apple cider vinegar? Like that was number one. And you can find articles based on it. And there was no scientific studies done based on humans that, Apple cider vinegar can d- boost your metabolism. Yeah. Yeah. It was a study based off of rats, and it changed their BMI levels. But also, you don't know if the only thing that the rats ha- consumed were apple cider vinegar all day to reduce <laughs> yeah. their body fat. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you know, so I, I end up going to these articles, and anytime it's like something that a client struggles with, I'll share the article with them and highlight it because I'm like, don't just believe what the words that I'm saying because then I just sound like everybody else. Just trust yep. me. Like this is the science. 
these are the articles that have been done and I'll send them multiple. So it's like, it's not just this one thing that I just found this clip from. These are the three or four articles that share the same information with the same sort of different studies done, but the same results. So like, this is why like you should kind of, you'll then, then uh, stay away from anything that you hear elsewhere. So then I'll t start to teach them like, don't listen to really, if this is what you believe and this is what mm -hmm. you are reading and this is science and this is fact, like why would you follow someone who says something different? Why would you pick up that article or that diet or listen to that person who does Octavia or yeah. keto and is losing weight from it? Like you know that's not true. You know what happens to the body based off of your knowledge now. Mm -hmm. So you're able to make more informed choices for yourself to like kind of get the bullshit out of yeah. the way and you know, you know, they start to like go down on this path of more confidence within themselves too because they're like, oh, I know Stacy is going to gain it back and I know I'm not as far <clears throat> in my journey and I haven't lost the 30 pounds. I lost 10 pounds, but in a year I'll lose 20 pounds or in two years and she'll still be in this cycle of trying a new diet yep. and I've only tried one mm -hmm. or did one thing sort of way. So yeah. What was the, um, how did this, how did you directing people with diet with their diet start? Was that obviously off of your own passion. But when did that really start to click for you being like, wow, like I can, I'm doing this with people now. Like I'm working with people. Uh, my goal is to help change people for the better and and like coach them now. When did that kind of fully, fully like form for yourself? I started like doing like, um, I guess when I lost my weight and was active on social media mm -hmm. and you know, I, I had abs, I guess, and was it like in shape. So people started contacting me and wanting meal plans. And I was like, meal plans aren't really like good because they're like mm -hmm. a diet at the end of the day. And you know, if you don't eat like this now, like you're not going to eat like this when the yeah. meal plan's done. So I started like doing consulting, um, just like locally through a friend of a friend hearing about me. And they, they just, it just like, went from there. I was working for my uh, boyfriend at the time out of his gym and I was shooting videos and things there and just uh, people started messaging me because I guess what I was posting was in, like they've never heard of it before. It was knowledgeable. It was new. So I started doing consulting and I actually called it Impel Nutrition first um, because I noticed there was a lack of um, like accountability with nutrition trackers. So it, I started with like people who already kind of had a baseline of mm -hmm. weight loss and used the trackers before. Um, so I started this Impel Nutrition thing that didn't end up working out. But then from there, it was like, all right, now I'm, I'm more confident in myself too that I can help people yeah. because everyone was like, I've never heard this before and I'm getting results and you're not just focusing on weight loss. You're helping me with my everyday life and teaching me how to meal prep for my kids and providing me delicious recipes and things like that. So it was kind of like a little accident. Like it was a passion of mine that then I just transformed and then I got certified. Um, before COVID, I got certified. Um, and then I was like, all right, I want to, I want to do this. Like I want to really help people and like stop their frustration with things mm -hmm. and um, find them a more sustainable way to do this instead of this little bit of cycle. So I mean, I've done my own journey, unfortunately, of investing and starting my own thing. And then I'm now here with the fuel and form yeah. nutrition. Just helps us to be better business yeah. owners, right? Like that's yeah. kind of the pitfalls we have to go through, but it's, um, it, it's right. It's, it's part of the game. Yeah. Um, and now, you know, for next time what, so, but that's, what you were kind of mentioned there, great lead into kind of fuel and form. How do you service your clients? I know you had mentioned um, you don't do, or maybe, or if that was Impel, you don't do less than three months, but how, how do your programs kind of work? How can people kind of think about if they're working with you, how, what they would get? Yeah, so um, when anyone, at, well, whoever starts with fuel and form, it's consulting that I do, so it's three months minimum um, because you can't really change or make a change, mm -hmm. a sustainable change within a month. Mm -hmm. So everyone gets like an hour consultation. That's like the first thing we go through this evaluation and during the evaluation process, it's basic questions like, what are your meal timings? What do you eat? Um, what do you, what do you think you struggle with? Um, family life and whatnot. And then during our conversation is when I start to pick up of other things. They're like, 
make an excuse about something and or say something about their time and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So I'll write those notes down and I'll like <clears throat> evaluate and be like, all right, what are the first things that we need to work on? And every client is different. So I do everything like customize and individualize. Like I have packets and things that I send for information to help just like streamline little things, but I'll take two to three days to then write up their information of what they need to work on and go from there. So let's say someone like skip wants to lose 20 pounds, but skips breakfast in their family is a huge trigger for them by like picking, picking from their husband or picking from their kids. Then we're going to start with, um, all right, you got to eat three balanced meals a day and I just want you to journal every time that you write down that you pick something so that it becomes like a ha- habit. So I'm trying to teach them how to become aware and their what their habits are and on their daily basis instead of making unconscious choices. Mm-hmm. So um, that's the consulting. And at the end, like month one, month two, and month three is always broken up into something like month two and three is usually where we start to do the weight loss and month one is habits, but it also take, depends on how long someone takes to do it. Yeah. So I've had clients with me for nine months, for a year, but after the three months, like that's, I would say, where they make the full commitment. And then after that, I have them do a like transitional phase where it's more affordable. Like I know that sometimes people need extra help, so I will never have them pay the fullest price at that point anymore. So I have a way of like, what are the things that you still continue to need? Do you need my highest service mm-hmm. at this point? So you're going to pay a little bit higher, but it transitions to something that you can do and it won't come, like you won't feel it in your pocket because I know the hardest thing is again, sustainability. Yeah. So I don't want to, I don't want to leave somebody to dry yeah. at that point. So we always work on, and I always work with somebody like, again, this is not my full-time job. It's my full-time passion, but I have a full-time job. Like the income doesn't matter to me. The people matter to me. The reason behind it matters to me. So like if someone can't afford it, I'll be like, all right, let's do monthly installments or I'll give you some money off. Like it's fine. Like it's not the big of a deal. If you really are committed to investing in yourself, Mm -hmm. I'm going to commit myself to invest Mm -hmm. in you. Like Mm -hmm. it's fine. So I do that. That's the consulting. And then I just created like online courses. So anything that was I like kind of, I, anything I teach is now in a document that people can download and do worksheets and do it themselves. So it's a more affordable cool. piece. But again, I feel like picking out your triggers yeah. are not something you're going to do on your own. No. Like you mm-hmm. need somebody it's else to help you. It's a learned yeah, yeah. behavior. Yeah. So yeah, it like helps you kind of realize it. But like, and again, I still do <clears> check-ins <throat> with everybody. Like, and I run um, an app uh, that I do like the transitional period. So I'll, I'll, I do do exercise programs too, and I do personal training. But nutrition's my number one. Gotcha. How do you, how do you balance all that, with full time job and then upkeeping right with yourself? Because it's almost like you're almost like hyper relating to your clients. If they say that they're busy, then you're like, I'm actually very busy too. So this is what I do. Yeah. Right. How do you manage that? What is your, what does like a day look like for you with, with your main job, then doing this, tending to people, right. And having that individualized effect of programming for these people, right. What do you, do you have time for yourself? Do you sleep enough? I do. Thank God. (laughs) Yes. Um, I set boundaries for myself. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, I am a people pleaser, so I will always put somebody else before me, and I really try to set that boundary that I have my me time, which is usually my workout and usually my nighttime routine are the two things that I know I need for myself during the day. And I was in a relationship for six years, so it it worked. Like, we made it work. Like, you can't be a busy bee and working 80 hours a week and, you know, you're alone and single, but, you know, other things ended up happening. But... So I work 40 hours a week in MRI. I work four 10-hour shifts. So it's Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, no, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. And it's 7.30 to 6. So at 6 o'clock in the morning on those days is when I'll work out for myself for an hour and a half. I I wear gym clothes. I put the scrubs on over my gym clothes. I don't shower. Sorry. But like (laughs) I put my scrubs on over it and then I go to work. Um, While I'm at work, if it's a slow day, I'm able to bring my laptop and do like Mm -hmm. computerized programs and stuff online or even do check-ins with clients because I can FaceTime and all that stuff. And then um, I usually sometimes have a client after at 6.30 p.m. So I'll transition to the gym 
and then I'll train the client for an hour and then I'm home and then that's when I I take everything out of my bag, I rinse everything off, dishwasher, feed my cat that I have, I'll um, get ready for the next day and then I'll eat dinner and then I'll shower and then I'll relax. Like TV is not my thing, I'm not on my phone when I get home so my time is my time and mm -hmm. I'm not distracted by it. So that's a big struggle, I think, with other people is the phone. Yeah. They're like, I have no time. And then it's like you just spent four hours on the couch scrolling and you watched my story. Like, go do something else. Like, yeah. do that when you're at work. Like, that's when I'm on my phone when I'm at <laughs> do work. Do that when you're at work. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Whoever Rachel's employer is, it's like, uh, one, they were happy that you showered at night, and two, that uh, you're getting all this work done. Don't not be on Instagram. Just yeah. do it while you're Rachel doing Rachel cares well. more about her nutrition clients than obviously I, her dog. Just like, you know, that's my boundary. Like, I won't be on my phone at home. Like, that's a big no for me. Yeah, I really good. try oh, yeah, not to do it. You've um, learned the systems that kind of keep you balanced you're able to work, be productive on, on every end that you need to yeah. and have the balance of downtime. People think it's like an all or nothing thing with the gym, with diet, with all this stuff, right? It's never all or nothing. Yeah. It's like keeping the balance and keeping yourself feeling fresh yeah. has to yeah. be the goal. And Otherwise, what's the point? Yeah, I schedule you know? everything. Like my workouts is scheduled, yeah. my creating content is scheduled, my meetings, my work day. So Thursdays is my day off, but I work from... 6 a.m. to sometimes like 7.30 mm -hmm. p.m. for clients. And then in between there, I have little gaps, but they're never going to be wasted. There's always going to be something being done during that time. And then I work Saturday and Sunday. I find it very hard to have, now that I'm single, to have free time for myself. Like, yeah. there, so I, I want to be busy now. Like, I, or, you know, I cook on the weekend, so that's mm -hmm. my big thing, too. I, I mean, it I doesn't take me that long because I have a lot of those, like, the crock pot, the rice cooker, and all that fun stuff. But, um, yeah, I like to be busy, but my home time is my home time, and I won't spend it wasting mm -hmm. it on mindless things. Like, yeah. I can do things to make myself feel better and make my days go smoother, even with the craziness, and I still am getting seven hours of sleep. Like, it's okay. The phone doesn't need me. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. good to have the boundaries. And that's also someone that creates a lot of content for you to say, I don't need, I don't need the phone. Yeah. Right? yeah. It's because you schedule in the time to be on the phone, to, yeah. to, 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 to create the content, answer people back that you mm -hmm. need to. Yeah. It's good. We like to kind of wrap it up with a, a thought about kind of what wellness is to you, right? We're obviously a very wellness-oriented space. This is the Well Life Podcast. So we like to kind of hear your perspective on what you, how do you define kind of wellness for you? Um, well, wellness, I think it has to come with a little bit of balance. So for me, sleep, exercise, nutrition are very important with wellness, but having a good balance with it. Like you need to be able to go and have a glass of wine and you need to see your friends and socialize and exercise is important for your mental health and physical health. It's, it shouldn't be a punishment. Like you should do it so you enjoy it. So finding a balance within the things that are going to make you feel physically better without one or the other, like you're not. So having that is, would be my definition of wellness, I guess. Yeah, I. no, that's great. <laughs> uh, I think it's in line with ours. Yeah. Um, but again, appreciate you. Thank you for taking the time. Yeah. Um, I feel like we've learned a lot. I think our people have last. Where can they find you? Like where would you point people to kind of, see your content, find out more about you. Mm -hmm. um, my Instagram, I would say, you can always contact me. It's um, coach underscore Rachel 89 or my website, fuelinformednutrition.com. I have a contact on there. My phone number is on there. My email is on there. So either or are the best places to contact me. Cool. Perfect. Yeah. Sounds Thank you good. again, Rachel. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Thank you guys for listening. Hope you enjoyed.